you mentioned Marvin Gaye, and I was going to ask because, especially on your first record, um, you do this kind of uh, well, Marvin Gaye does it, of course. Marvin Gaye pioneered it, and Slick Rick also did it. Where, you know, sometimes the narrator, the the lead person, sings, but often the 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 background vocal has just as much agency as the mm-hmm. the singer has. What is, what is your yeah. method of song? Because then I'm wondering, like, are you writing this on paper? Like, okay, well, I'll sing this, and then the background will sing that, and da da da. In parentheses, no, we do it all. We do it all. It's like it's just like okay, well, the backgrounds. It would be a lot of work because the backgrounds. And I did one project where I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just try to not do any of those backgrounds. I'm gonna just like keep. I just noticed people just only do top line, so I'm gonna just do some top line. Wow, this is way faster getting through a song because the backgrounds have are always like really really important and so really it's just a matter of not writing anything down or anything but just like listening and then saying okay something a lot of times the what you what how you would like bed the 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 lower vocals or like the lower tones Mm -hmm. those would be more of the feature those would have more movement so like i like to do like the high one those will be sustained more like and now But then underneath that, like that. And then it's like, okay, then we have that in between. And it's like, okay, what can go in the middle of that? Mm-hmm. Maybe a little something. Right. You know, and something like, so then things are like kind of moving. And we, this is why I say I, the, for me, the music is like visual, but in a different way. It's like, it's movement like color and kind of like, you know, like it's hard for me to articulate it exactly because it is something that's very visual, but not in a picture, not in a real human being. Thing. I see what you're it's saying. Colors, like if you look at the universe and the galaxy, you're like seeing like swirling. I know it sounds like silly, but we're not silly, but mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not trying to be woo woo about it. It's just that that is literally how, um, how I'm creating and Rich is similar in when we were do our vocals. We like collaborate really well because we think very similarly when it comes to especially those kinds of background notes. And it might be something, go ahead. Then my one question is how tedious is it if you're doing this live? Like how hard on you are are you on Either if you have background singers, like how hard on you, like do not sing, don't do huh? it. No, yeah, don't. I don't. I tried that, so, and I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> but play wait. it. <laughs> no, you will. You can't. You can't sing it. <laughs> wait, literally. Wait. There are no background singers. Literally, when when I didn't know you. When I didn't know you, there was a moment. Okay, it's it's actually one of my favorite albums of yours is the one that you didn't release in the United States. Um, because I love it. Because I love it. Uh, and the intro. Oh. And the thing was, in my mind, okay, the first song, I would say, this is probably how she's going to come out on stage. So this is going to be the intro song that, you know, because it's not a full song. It's like a two-minute thing. So right. I was like, yeah. she's this. But then when I heard the backgrounds, I said, yo, this is, this is really intricate. And then I said to myself, I wonder how hard she is on her background vocals. So hard they don't exist. She No, but then I think I actually put in my head, she must be a hard, difficult person to work for because... Like I I don't know I don't know one singer that won't they stop the world. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. I'm kind of kidding. I'll tell you the story. Uh, no, done. but that's the thing. I actually said, I said I bet you she's a, she's a hard person to work for because, like, I can't see someone nailing this to perfection to the place where she wants it to be. So I bet you, like, she just either just insists like. Pro Tool, all my background vocals, we'll trust that. But I was like, there's no way that someone is doing this live and nailing it. Because you were just, you're tag teaming with yourself in ways, it's yeah. like a cat and mouse thing. 
And I was yeah. like, I don't think this can be recreated on stage. So that's it. It really, um, no, it cannot be because everyone's voice voice is different. And when I, I was joking when I said, "Oh, they're fired." No, no. And I don't mean that to say no. No, I can sing it like me. It's not you that. Can protect your work. No one's going to sound like yourself. It's just that. Yeah. It's just that it's not going to sound the same. And because one, it's not going to sound the same because it is someone else singing it. But because mm -hmm. again, the backgrounds are not backgrounds backgrounds are like a lead they are like the co-stars of the songs and i say that in an objective way in that i'm not saying well that's me and that's my voice no i mean just how they're crafted is that they are very important they're as important as the lead they are in a sense their own lead which and since i'm not in a group you can't sing that part because you won't sound like me because you're not you don't you're not you don't have my voice you have your own gift your own voice and it's different and i did try to have background singers before mm. and it wasn't that they weren't getting the parts although they always had to be laid in there anyway tucked because it would be hard to follow otherwise but also it doesn't sound like me to me mm -hmm. and so when i'm singing because the song is supposed to sound like this right. if it's another voice it was throwing me off and the textures just weren't coming out correctly to me and i will i will say I'm a person, um, I don't enjoy generally speaking, not all the time. I don't enjoy watching performances when I'm listening to somebody singing their record and there's other people's voices that are there that wasn't there on the record. Personally, I don't. But wait, so then how do you do a live show in that way, right? So you can pro tool it. The vocals are all mine. Pro tool. I pro tool it. We, had, we got to the point where we would have background singers miming. They were, they were mouthing. But don't you dare let me hear a thing Dog, come out your throat. No, I'm just, I love the, <laughs> the years of sleep that I've lost knowing, like, literally, I was just like, man, I could, like, her background parts are too intricate. I can't see her being not pleasant to work for, but I know I've seen people. And I was never mean about it, by the way, either. When we, when we decided to not have any background singers anymore, I was not mean about it. I know it wasn't. It wasn't their fault. Oh, it was, it's cool, it was, but you can be serious about how you want stuff, and yeah, I, was just I like, respect oh, this that. Going to work out, and I felt bad actually because I felt like, oh man, and I know that it was. It would have been nice, and that feel would have been nice, like as far as mm -mm. personalities go, but it just wouldn't sound right. No, nah, you you laid a mouse trap that was not able to be crossed ever. So, <laughs> but that makes you unique. No, I was going to say now, um, in the age of K-pop, where you know, and I'm not talking about the K-pop that sort of thrusted in our faces, like the the popular ones. Dude, there's like right now in K-pop world, there is I mean the the level of post New Jack swing, and they're almost like entering their boom bap era right now. Like at first the the New Jack swing era of K-pop, where everything sounded like Teddy Riley and that you know, mm -hmm. like Jam and Lewis R and B of the mm -hmm. late '80s. Now, like, I'm getting hip to K-pop groups that are using like break beats and whatnot. Have mm -hmm. you ever, mm -hmm. have you ever thought of? Because you, when you were talking about similar voices, like I know, like the only difference that I would see between K-pop groups and maybe like the, like in America, I guess the the air quote boy band theory is like four members five members whereas now 20, we're seeing 000. yeah we're seeing k-pop groups that start at seven yeah. i've seen one that's right. like 11 you know what i mean and they're doing intricate parts you know that sort of thing mm -hmm, have you mm -hmm. been approached like because right now i feel like k-pop is going through their nostalgia 90s R&B period right now like have you been approached to compose songs uh, for any of those groups or I know there was some talk about something like that maybe several years ago because um, okay. I did collaborate with a couple of artists um, a lot of years ago like uh, over a decade ago mm -hmm. um, and then yeah a, a couple of artists and that it was been about that long and, it came, it um, and then there was yeah, so, and then I performed with them, and we did things together over there. Um, and then there was talk about possibly doing some kind of like writing, that kind of thing. But I you haven't delved into it. 
it could be cool, but there's so much that I want to do creatively. And, you know, you realize your time is limited I get that mm -hmm. I would just do my own thing and put it out, which would, to me it always made more sense than to go ahead and do what I'm going to create. And then songs that I don't end up using, that kind of thing, seeing, you know, then shopping those like that, but not actually going in. And although I consider that too, like going in and working with someone mm -hmm. or some people like to specifically craft something for them, especially because as an artist, I feel like I can go in and really respect them as an artist and uh, what they want to do and what they don't want to do or sing about, you know, and just mm -hmm. knowing from my own experiences. That's why I really work with like, different producers, but I have like the, the ones that I really work well with. And the thing is that sometimes even to my own like chagrin, I have to write my own records really. The only person who could really write records for me would be Rich and we can collaborate, we can write them or uh, like one or two other people. That's it because no one, el no one else is going to actually write a song that's what I want, what I would actually say. Because, you know, so I've been in, in sessions where they'd be like, okay, da, 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 da. and I only went to the sessions because someone at the label wanted me to go. Not No offense to the people who were there, but that, that wasn't, you know, if I'm going to work with someone, that's why I never really want make people pay me. I think I think maybe probably people paid me a couple of times for, uh, what is it, a feature. But I was right. always like, I'll do a feature. You don't, you don't, they don't have to pay me because to me, then I might be in a minority. I feel like there's something a little offensive about uh, having to, like, someone asking someone to pay me for a feature because I feel like if I'm an artist and I appreciate you and you're like appreciating me, let's just, let's, let's create together. Let's play together. Let, right. it's, it's, you know, most of the time you pay somebody, it's going to that label and this and someone wants fees, but so I don't you don't know, even I want pub a little weird you don't want publishing. That. No, you get publishing, but I'm talking about, will you do this song with yeah. me? I'll pay you this money to do the song with you. Ah, and okay. then if you're going to be All in the right. video, I'll pay you more money to do the video. And I kind of okay. feel like if you agree to do the song, the inherent in that is the acceptance of doing the video, if there is one, right? You don't have to pay me, but something right. about it feels a little like too transactional versus two artists coming together to create some magic. Real quick, because we mentioned it. I want to go back to the K-pop question that Amira asked you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Curious. Um, do they do they understand and accept you also as one of them in that way? And do they see you as an asset because you are a part of them as well? How does that work? When when I did collab, you know, back at that time, they were really mm -hmm. like appreciative. And my mom was with me, too. Um, but okay. it, was, it was also interesting to see how the system works. It works really differently. Like, you know, artists in the States, they go show up to a thing, perform. Um, the people that are in the doing the background stuff the, the you know the show that you go show up for to perform all that the, the producers all that they producers of the show they they can tend to be um more deferential to the mm -hmm. artist not saying that you want that but that's just like they're just like okay you're here to do the song we appreciate you we're gonna do some tv blocking etc but they're very differential it's kind of was the opposite way what i was witnessing now for me it was different they treated me very well with respect the people on the tv show because i'm also an american i'm coming in so i'm a guest to, uh, in more ways than one you know when I visited but I noticed that for the artists who are and maybe it's different now this is this is back in you know I forgot what year but t t at least 10 years plus right uh, I noticed that the artists were deferential to the tv producers they were the ones doing the uh the extra bow and the mm, extra okay. you know and so um that was interesting you know that was curious to me mm -hmm. But it's because of, it's the way that and I the way I figured it was that their entertainment system, because we created our enter system, entertainment system decades and decades and decades and decades, we have so much longer. There was a, a change out of the old studio system, our old Hollywood studio system, where the actors and stuff probably were very differential to the producers back in yeah. the Marilyn Monroe, mm -hmm. pre Marilyn Monroe, Lauren McCall days. Right. But it's grown. And artists have learned their power and it's become a different ecosystem. And so I was like, where they are now is where golden age Hollywood was before. And as it progresses mm. around the world, the entertainment system progresses, artists will become, become more knowledgeable of their power and recognize their power. And then those around them who work for them when the TV shows, when the TV producers will understand that the around the artists, the artist is the sun and everything else is revolving around them. Yeah. And once the artists realize that the system will change. So it's just mm. that they're just behind, they're just, it's like the, uh, you know, advance of humanity, right? Like 
and any kind of system. Th that's where they are and they're gonna be in a different place and soon it's gonna be totally different.